I have compiled all information from the podcast, deep dive, trailer, tweets, teasers, patch notes and my own to bring you the complete season 9 update in this video. So many quality of life changes from solo slooping to world events, including modifications for our glass pvp. So if I happen to miss something, I'm just an idiot. Oh, we are now back to 6 ships per server. And a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Fuzzy here, sit back, relax and enjoy. Season 9 is unlike previous seasons, as in new content. Instead, it is a vast list of quality updates and balances to bring more life to the seas that will improve your experience. And the community have been asking for lots of these changes that are finally here. Like this brightness bar in the settings, I can finally stream with my shades on to compensate for the darkness they cause by adjusting that and the contrast, sticking to my brand, close to it, and by the audio section, you'll notice that these sounds now have their own slider when you hit another ship. This is a game changer for someone like me, who plays on stream without game music, so I can keep you relaxed with the jazz. Now I can tell if I had a ship without disrupting the smooth flow. Keep in mind, these were two Twitch stream shameless plugs. Moving on to Reapers. We know that you can sell Athena and Reaper flags to the mysterious stranger for Guardians of Fortune. In addition, Reapers are now similar. To balance the scales, you can directly sell any emissary flag to the skeleton by the Reaper emissary table available at every outpost, including hourglass emissary flags. Remember, he does not take any loot, only emissary flags. Speaking of selling flags and sinking ships, just like harpooning a player, now no need for two people to bring items onto the ship. You can be as lazy as you like and get all the loot on the ship while your crewmate walks the dog. This works for the ship and for the sovereigns. However, it is yet to work for the harpoon robot. And when a ship sinks, if they run to the Red Sea, which is the edges of the map that deals damage to ships, the loot will flow to the nearest reachable point at the edge of the Red Sea for you to get. So if you are trying to escape a ship, it's better to fight or strategically try and distract them by selling stuff on a robot. Running to the Red Sea will only be your loss, as they can still get the treasure instead of spawning in inaccessible areas like it used to be. And the best part is, any ship that sinks, just like skeleton ships, has seagulls flying over the treasure so it can mark its location, making it much easier to spot. Moreover, world events. The most significant changes are focused around these. One of the most exciting world events, the fleet of the Burning Blade, has returned. Initially, it was Flameheart's head trash talking you, but now, due to lore reasons and his rebirth, it had been replaced with a green storm after a long absence. From this fleet, you can unlock the Burning Blade sails and acquire the most powerful cannonball in the game, the Wraith Cannonball. Imagine using that for Hourglass PvP. All world events now scale with the crew size. For example, skeleton forts detect how many players are around at the start of each wave. So approaching it as a solo galleon and later inviting your crew over to get an easier difficulty for 4 players will now work. However, if you are completing a world event and notice skeletons are suddenly harder than the previous waves, you should check around for a nearby thief. Difficulties also scale with other areas of the map, like Ashen Lord, Kraken, Megalodon, and more. And for Commendation Hunters and Fishermen, there's an NPC now at Steven's Spoil instead of Merrick that can buy your fish. Even though the Sovereigns now accept Hunter's Call items too, who also have a new building at the port, I do not recommend that, since Hunter's Call pay you 50% more for the stuff that you sell them. With that, also keep an eye on these mermaid statues, as each can give you more than one gem that you can sell to Hunter's Call. Remember, if you want to go fishing, you can also buy a bait crate from the merchants to make your fish and chill adventure smoother. From the Fort of Fortune, which is the randomly appearing fort, the skull with red eyes and scars, as of season 9 you will get the chest of fortune inside the vault, which is required to sell 30 of that to the gold hoarder so you can unlock the fates of fortune ship set. Each will sell for 20,000 gold without emissary multiplier, and to complete the set you will also need to sell 30 reaper chest of either type to reaper's bones to get the weapons. Reaper chests also now have beacons visible all the time. These chests can now be found around the map or are best to get from the fort of the damned, unlike fort of fortune. Fort of the Damned can be activated using Flames of Fate that can be easily acquired from the new Skull of Destiny. This Skull of Destiny can only be found in the new Captain Voyages for Pirate Legends by the Shipwright. Additionally, there is the Black Powder Voyage and Cursed Treasures. I made a short about these to explain it in detail. For the Cursed Treasures, there is also a new crying chest that doesn't stop crying, called the Chest of Boundless Sorrow. And speaking of chests, instead of removing trinkets and items from inside of chests, you have two options. First, to sell the chest content while it's closed, it will get filtered out according to what NPC accepts it. And second, you can sell the chest after it's empty. Also, with the radial menu of food, you can pick what to eat instead of shuffling through. And your logbook now has detailed information about your adventure. You can also grab the Hearing Things emote for free from the Pirate Emporium. And if you can hear this click, please subscribe to my channel, as I will be uploading a whole set of new updated guides for Season 9 and beyond. It was nice talking to you.